Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick minute today and talk about, well, to be honest, I don't know exactly what I want to talk about, but I know I, know I want to talk about something. Uh, I don't really know what all I'm going to cram into this because I don't have a script that I'm following, but I, I ran into a couple of situations here recently that, 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 really want to make, that really made me want to talk about some of this stuff. So uh, whenever it comes to competition, I just, I, it, it never has been a part of my life. I just finished a repair. Let me get rid of these gloves. It never has been a part of my life. Uh, I just have not had that competitive drive. I've never particip uh, participated in sports, and I've never felt the need to like be better than somebody else. You know, I've never looked at somebody that had big arms and, and big chest and been like, "Man, that prick," and felt like I should be that. I I should have that. I just that is a feeling that that I don't have. It it's not a part of my soul. It just I I don't have it. So in normal everyday life, competition. It, it's not a part of my blood whatsoever. It's just, it's just not me. I don't, I don't have it. Until it comes to business. Now, whenever I first started in the mobile electronics repair business, you know, I'm looking around and I'm looking at the other shops around me and I'm looking at, at what they're doing and, and I automatically start thinking of ways that I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to try to do better than that. I'm going to have more flashy ads. I'm going to make my prices 30 cents lower. I'm just, I, I, I am just, I'm going to be better. So whenever it comes to business, I really do have that. And whenever I hear about somebody, you know, a, a shop, 30 minutes away they get a piece of, of, equip, of equipment that I don't have and it's just like man they had the money to buy that and then I start feeling left out and then I start feeling this competitive drive like oh, I'm gonna get back ahead of them so whenever it comes to this competitive drive in normal life I just don't have it but in business it's it it, it used to be a big part of it now since I started showing now this is I don't know how I'm gonna bring this out but it's something that I that I definitely want to share but since I started showing the world what I'm doing here and then I've actually got people that watch it and I'm starting to get feedback like I've, I've you know a lot of you that watch my channel I sometimes I go through my subscriber list and I get curious about names and I start looking at, at you guys' channels and looking at what other people are doing and I'm starting to see like a, some direct relation between things that I'm doing here at my bench and things that you guys are doing at your bench and one thing that that I want to try to get out of out of my head and onto this video is this transition and feelings that I'm going through. And yeah, I'm going to talk about feelings, so you might as well close out now. This is not a repair video. But there's this transition and feelings I'm going through. So I'm, I'm going through, here I am with, when it comes to business, I got this competitive drive, and I want to have the better ads, and I want to make sure I've got my lettering on my car, and, and I, want to be, I, I, I want to be better than that guy. To... I see other people doing what I'm doing, and when I hear somebody right down the street, they went and bought a, a half -O FX9, Hacko FX 951, and they bought the same Amscope microscope. I I hear this happening like it, locally, just down the street. But rather than having this feeling of competitive drive and, and feeling threatened by that, it's given me this feeling of accomplishment. And I have to tell you, that feeling of accomplishment. It is far greater than anything that I've ever felt in competition. I mean, heck, it, it just it gives me goosebumps all over. It's really this awesome feeling of accomplishment. So now whenever I hear about somebody down the street and they're like, and I've had people call me before and they're like, hey, did you know so-and-so? They're, they're starting to advertise micro-soldering. And I'm like, really? That That's fantastic. They just, you know, they, they've been a subscriber for four months. Now, I can't take uh, take full credit, but at the same time, you know, I, I like to feel that I played some part in it, and even if I didn't play some part in it, that competitive drive that I had, where I hear somebody else went and got a hot air station, and and they're advertising touch repairs for seventy-five dollars cheaper than I am, it's just like I still feel good about it. I, I don't feel like oh, they're going to put me out of business. It's not. It's just. It's not a part of my life anymore. I, it's it, this feeling, this sense of competition. It's just. It's really been dampened down. So. Um, with all that being said, I really want to say thank you. Uh, thank you all of you. Thank you all of you that's commented um, and let me know. Um, those of you that have put videos online and stuff, even if you didn't ask me to go look, there's a chance that I've been looking anyways. Uh, so I just, you know, thank you. That, that's, a, that's a really good feeling and it genuinely helps me to keep producing these videos because although I wouldn't be sitting here at this bench all day every day if I didn't have to make money, um, I still find much, much enjoyment in doing these videos and doing this type of work that is far outside of making money, or I wouldn't be sitting here for hours and hours and hours on end doing stuff that made absolutely no money. 
but just develops my learning. So w with all that being said, I'm also starting to see, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm starting to see a lot more people doing this. Now, I have had a small handful of people that come forward and somewhat chewed me out for some of the stuff that I have shared on this YouTube channel. And they're just, you know, it's this competitive drive that I no longer have. Well, I'm, I'm sure I still have it to some extent. It just, but whenever it comes to the stuff that I'm, that I'm displaying here, that, that feeling of competition, it has been replaced with this overwhelming, like empowering feeling of, of being successful when I see other people doing it. So when I see others near me springing up at this and being successful, well, it starts to make me feel successful. And I've just, I've never felt that before. And it, it really is an awesome feeling. So when you come to me angry and spitting mad because I gave away some secret that you've been hoarding that's been keeping you in business. I I, I want to say that I'm sorry about it, but that would just be to make things sound good. I'm absolutely not sorry about it because when I sit here and now I'm not talking about M1, scratch M1. That that's that's the past. I'm embarrassed over it. Let's move past it. <laughs> um, but whenever it's something that I sat here and I figured out with my cheap tools. When I, I figured out with my voltmeter and I figured this problem out and I figured out it's this 30 pin BGA chip that's shorted internally and I replaced it and it's like cool and I show the world here's how to fix that and then you get all upset and offended and come to me like can't believe you showed them how to do that now I don't have my secret and it's you know I'm not going to give a real accurate comparison like a real accurate example to this because then there's a few a few people that are going to understand exactly who I'm talking about and I don't want to point fingers directly because I don't you know, I, I don't like conflict and I try to stay away from it. So here I am, I'm sitting here and I don't have this competitive nature. I don't feel upset because you're holding the soldering iron and you're soldering the same thing that I'm soldering and by God, that was my idea, that's mine. I don't have that, it's not a part of my life. I just, I, I don't have it. So whenever you come to me upset because I gave away your trick and it's not like I snuck around and I snuck into your shop and I dug around and I found some piece of evidence that showed me what you've been hiding. It's because I sat here and figured it out on my own, which means it wasn't really much of a trick to start with because I'm not that good at this. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move past um, emotions and um, feeling competition versus accomplishment, which is something that's beginning to become like, uh, you know, it's a real, real shift in emotions in my life. And... Um, I have all of you to thank for that. So uh, moving on past my thank you speech and, and competition and thinking that you holding on to your little secret. Now, I did watch a Rossman video some year or more ago about about competition and business and um, and people that feel like that one little secret is all that keeps them in business. Um, I did watch that, but this speech has nothing to do with that. This is, this is all me. So um, moving past all that, Let's move on to um, my next topic here and showing people what I'm doing here and, and seeing this, this uh, feedback of accomplishment, it, realizes, it makes me realize whenever it, it comes to this whole repair thing um, and repair in general and you look at the value of the devices that we're repairing compared to what we're able to charge to fix them and compared to what we're going to have to spend on tools to do it. Um, whenever it comes to trying to get new people to come in to repair and get new, more people interested in repair, it's really, really difficult to get them to spend fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand or four or five thousand dollars on an upfront investment whenever the electronics just keep getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So with what I'm doing and I'm showing people like all kinds of people all over the world, which is totally sweet, that you can do this with a hundred and twenty nine dollar station. You know, I've got what did I pay? I think I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for my FX nine fifty one, which came with the twenty twenty seven handle and no tips though. I, I had to buy all the tips separately. But the tips for the twenty twenty seven they're they're inexpensive. You're talking fifteen to what twenty five dollars or something. Um, I did put in an extra hundred bucks on the twenty thirty two micro pencil plus like a forty dollar tip. I'm not going to go into all these numbers like like I'm not going to sit here and add it all up but if I just rough estimate I'm going to say 250 350 another 60 so there's 400 hot air I got 500 uh you know 550 will add a little bit of tax and then you add this stereo microscope that's about a $400 investment so without the camera 
I'm at about a grand. And that's counting soldering station, that's hot air station, that's with the 2032 micro pencil. Um, you know, that's not counting all the miscellaneous tools and, and knickknacks all over the place. That's stuff that you build up over time. But when it comes to the tools that I'm using here, they're really good tools and they're really, really inexpensive. So somebody that's interested in getting into something like this that's really skeptical and, you know, in one hand, they've got their weekly paycheck and they've got the bills covered. And in the other hand, you know, maybe they've been saving a little bit of money, but are they going to plunk out five or eight thousand dollars uh, for venture capital to get in on fixing something that's only worth seven or eight hundred bucks? And, you know, maybe people out there are more responsible than me and they can see the return on investment and more of a long term picture. But I'm not that far sighted. I mean, I, I, I don't look that far into the future. So whenever I start to think that you may only be able to make a hundred bucks a pop and you know you gotta you start figuring in expenses there and and all the things that you gotta buy and and the consumables and things that you have to keep going and plus you're gonna have you know a little warranty work here there you have defects and once you start putting all this together that return on investment starts taking a really really long time to get back and what if you're no good at it what what if you stick your neck out that far and you completely suck and now you've got four thousand dollars worth of tools sitting around that's you know that that's nowhere to be. So that fear alone will keep somebody from wanting you know, wanting to pick this up as a trade. So I I really feel like me sitting here showing people that you can do it with reasonably priced tools sustainably is a, a I feel like it's a big it's a it's a step toward bringing people into this repair. Uh, it's a step toward bringing people into repair that wouldn't normally be into repair because they can't afford it. Now. I can say that the most important tool, if you are going to be getting into micro soldering, the most important tool out of all tools is the microscope. You don't need anything fancy. This is like 7 to 45x or whatever. Um, it's not a high powered microscope. You go beyond 45x, the light that I have on here is not bright enough. You're just, you're too close. Anything that you see me doing on this channel is never over 45x because that's where my microscope maxes out at. So the most important tool is the microscope. If you have the microscope and you can see what you're doing, you can use anything to accomplish a task because you can see what you're doing. Compared to if you can't see what you're doing and all your other tools are junk, you're not even going to know it because you can't see what you're doing. But if you can see what you're doing and you're using a crappy soldering iron, you can still tell how good the work looks. So uh, most important tool. The second tool that really, really that I'm, I'm glad that I spent money on and I didn't skimp because I skimped first, I had about a $60 station that had hot air and soldering built in and that dang soldering iron, it would self-destruct once every week because it didn't have any, like it, it wouldn't sleep when you put it down and it would just sit there and it melted and you'd forget that thing on, you'd come back to it and it would be melted and hanging all down. <laughs> that was junk. But it still got my foot in the door to where I got, you know, dozens of charge ports done with it. I wasn't using a microscope. Wait, no, I wasn't using a microscope. I was using a magnifier with a little USB microscope. I made a, um, a microscope camera out of a, I don't have it laying here anymore, out of a CCTV camera with the lens adjusted. I used that for a microscope for a while. I mean, I was determined to micro solder to the point where I was building stuff to be able to see what I was doing. And from there, I was using really, really crappy tools to be able to get the job done. And now, about six months later, after I did get a proper microscope, I had some of those jobs come back, and I looked at them and was like, ooh, they looked really, really, really bad. So um, those jobs, I wound up fixing them right, and they got covered under warranty. But um, nevertheless, now, I didn't just outright practice on their crap either. That Most of what I did was done on donor boards. And until I knew that I could do it without trashing that customer's equipment, I didn't touch it. Because listen to the tools that I'm buying. You know I couldn't afford to replace their phone. You know, this was a seat of my pants deal to get this going. And I had to be very efficient and really, really choosy about where I put my money. If I had taken this big pile of money here and stuck it into one tool, but didn't have the other three tools I needed to do the job, I could have never got it off the ground. So how could I, with my shoestring budget, ever realistically start micro soldering if I couldn't if I couldn't afford a six hundred dollar rework station or a, a eight hundred dollar ultrasonic cleaner. I just you know that's there's no way I would have ever done this if I didn't figure out a way to make these tools affordable. So 
that's going to be the last part of this video. You know, I wanted to share a few a few really strong feelings that I had, and you know, the first is this shift between competition and accomplishment that's happening over the same set of circumstances, the same circumstances that would normally trigger this competitive drive in me, it now can triggers this accomplishment, feeling of accomplishment and goosebumps again. It, it's really empowering. It, it's, it's awesome. And then from there, it's I, I start realizing just how many newcomers there are. And I'm realizing, well, these people are starting to realize that they can do this with stuff that doesn't have to cost them an arm and a leg. They don't have to go take out a mortgage on their house and jeopardize their entire family just to see if they're able to do something. You know, they don't have to spend a few thousand bucks just to see if they're able to do it. So, you know, that that's a really big deal when you start talking about repair. The cost of the tools to get into it is a really, really big deal. And even if you want to get something that's just starting out, and so what if it's not going to last you 10 years? If it can at least let you know whether or not you can do it, that's a lot better than winding up spending a bunch of money just to find out that it's an utter failure and you, you don't want to do it. So anyways, I've got to get back to work. I've got mountains of stuff to do. I Actually, I have, no, I have absolutely no clue how I'm going to get through all this today. I, I'm probably going to make some changes here pretty soon. So uh, anyways, that is it for this video. I really, really, really thank you all for watching because, uh, well, you're keeping me going. So I hope you all have successful repairs, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching, everybody.